In August 1822, King George IV visited Edinburgh, the first monarch to do so in nearly two centuries. George had succeeded to the throne on 19th July 1821, but he was hugely unpopular, so the idea was put forward that he visit Scotland to improve his image. It fell to Sir Walter Scott to deliver the goods. The first organised pageant took place on 12th August 1822, the King's 60th birthday, with the King himself arriving two days later at Leith. But due to the heavy rain, he stayed put. Undeterred, Scott rode out to the Royal George to greet him, where he presented him with a silver St Andrew's cross, designed and embroidered by the ladies of Edinburgh. The following day, and wearing his naval uniform, the King, wanting to reach the comforts in the capital, had himself driven up Leith Walk at a trot, somewhat to the disdain of the Royal Company of Archers, who had to accompany him. Only 27 managed to keep up with him and his carriage until they reached their destination. The King sat in an open carriage drawn by eight beautiful bay horses with gilt harnesses. He looked well and happy while he was attended to by John Campbell, Lord Bredalbin, marching ahead of his 65 Highlanders with music playing as well as members of the MacGregor and other Highland clans, whose chiefs wore the Highland dress. A few wore eagle's feathers to mark them out as dignitaries. These, along with the Royal Archers, the Knight Marshal Sir James Lamb and the Lord Lyon Depute and his heralds, made up an impressive procession. The first few days of the visit were marred by the deaths of Robert Stuart, Lord Castlereagh, who took his own life in 1821, and William Erskine, Lord Kinnader, the latter being a good friend of Scott. Scott was devastated at the loss of his friend to fever on 14th August 1822, the day the King arrived in Scotland. But he understood the importance of the visit and set his grief aside for the time being. A levy was held at Holyrood Palace on Saturday 17th August, where George appeared wearing Highland dress, made in the Royal Tartan. In the King's drawing room on Tuesday 20th, another levy took place, attended by over 450 ladies wearing their finest gowns. As was custom, the King had to kiss each one of them on the cheek. During that first levy, when the King wore the tartan, he also wore buff-coloured trousers like flesh to imitate his royal knees. In reality, it was to try and hide his legs. However, the most obvious problem was the length of his kilt, which was too short, and at least one guest commented on it. It's believed Lady Jane Hamilton Dalrymple overheard the comment and quipped, Since he is to be among us for so short a time, the more we see of him, the better. The king wearing his short kilt became a widely published caricature. At night the town was illuminated with devices, making up roses and thistles in the new gas lamps which had been installed in Princes Street and they were well received. With carriages being forbidden, the street was left clear for pedestrians who stood in groups admiring the lamps, but there was no trouble, despite the relaxation of business, and according to reports, ever since the King came, nobody had been seen drunk in the street. A bonfire was lit on Arthur's seat, and although it was wet, it didn't deter people. The Caledonian Hunt Ball and the Peers Ball were both highly successful, although the King had said that no quadrilles or foreign dances should be danced at the first ball. However, two old gentlemen, one from the Highlands, had been dancing a foursome reel with two ladies for about 15 minutes 
when the king came from the other end of the room to watch them. It was said the old gentleman had to dance for quite some time to show off to George. The king was impressed by the dancing and was heard to call out, delightful. This peer's ball, hosted for the king by the peers of the country on Friday 23rd August, caused a great deal of anxiety beforehand, as Highland dress was the order of the day. It was widely known the king had ordered a kilt, usually the reserve of the army, after it had been outlawed following Culloden in 1746. However, the Dress Act was repealed in 1782, so lowland gentlemen began frantically finding out their Highland heritage, so they could order the correct tartan for their kilts. The King had decreed that no gentleman is allowed to appear in anything but the ancient Highland costume. When George appeared, he wasn't wearing his kilt. The Scottish ladies present at the balls received some attention from the King, with Elizabeth Campbell, Lady Glenorchy, said to be the most beautiful woman who attended. On his arrival at Holyrood Palace, the King had given a gracious speech after passing through the crowds of his subjects, all of whom listened attentively. He said that he'd always heard Scots were proud people, but that they may well be proud, for they were a nation of ladies and gentlemen. While in the city, George conferred a baronetcy on the Lord Provost, William Arbuthnot, which was done by him addressing him as Sir William while drinking to his health. The King also toasted the clans. It was also during this visit he knighted Captain Adam Ferguson, Keeper of the Honours of Scotland, and Henry Rayburn, the Scottish portrait painter, who was appointed portrait painter to George IV in Scotland. In the pouring rain, George visited Edinburgh Castle on Thursday 22nd, where he was taken with the fine views across the city and the cheering crowds. On the Sunday, he attended a service at St Giles Cathedral. On Thursday 29th, George went to the theatre to watch an adaptation of Scott's Rob Roy, the last time he was seen in public. He also dined at Hopeton House that day as a guest of John Hope, 5th Earl of Hopeton, before returning to his boat which was docked at South Queen's Ferry. He then headed south. The visit had a profound effect on the Scottish people. A new Scottish identity had been created where the Highlanders and Lowlanders had a commonality. Yet there were still deep divisions within society and his visit came just two years after the Radical War when workers, mainly weavers, went on strike for better wages better working conditions and better homes. It was also at the beginning of the second phase of the Highland Clearances, where people were being evicted from their homes to make way for sheep. When Queen Victoria came to the throne in 1837, she embraced tartan, and at Balmoral it was widely used. The Queen also had tartan dresses made, she loved her time at the castle, as does Elizabeth II, who can find some solitude there. <laughs>